-hmm. All right. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Awesome. Well, hallelujah. Uh, good morning and hello again <coughs> to those who have been tuning in to these recordings um, as I have been uh, talking about um, uh, the voice of the Lord this year, hearing his voice, uh, talking a little bit about healing today. Um, I just felt feel led to just talk a little bit more about hearing the voice of God and knowing and discerning uh, his voice from the voice of the enemy and how hearing the voice of God can help us to birth or rebirth uh, the ministries that he's called us to. And, and it can help us uh, if we've gotten off course to get back on course, help us to believe again, help us to get back in that, in that um, area uh, that God has called us to and just even fine tuning some things. So um, we're going to pray and then we're going to just kind of jump right into the message today. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for your words. Your words are spirit and they are life. And when we hear your words, Father, we receive your instructions, your directions. We receive the guidance and the wisdom that is needed for where we are today. So as I share this message, Father, I ask that you would allow those who are, are tuning into me uh, to begin to hear your voice and to know that you are speaking directly to them. And God, I give you praise today and the glory and the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We're continuing our teaching on hearing the voice of God. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit more about hearing and obeying his voice, fine tuning some things, why it is so important that we would hear his voice and just a little bit about how to discern that voice of God and just how um, that the hearing the voice of God can connect us to um, help us to connect the dots of ministry, where we are, what God is doing and how he wants us to just to fall in line with his plans and purposes for our lives. And so um, I'm going to go, first of all, take a look at uh, the, the call of God um, as the Lord um, calls Moses to hear him speaking through a burning bush. And so we're going to tie this together, that this is often the, the starting point of real Bible ministry, real, true, authentic ministry, where God works with us, where God is the one who's doing the work, where he's the one who's healing, delivering, restoring, and releasing people into their divine gifts and callings according to what he has called us to do. And so uh, the call of God, it, it, it fits us. It fits our personality. It fits uh, uh, the, the visions and dreams that he put in our hearts. He brings them together so that we can see how they are supposed to work, how they're supposed to flow. So let's look at the life of Moses, at the ministry of Moses, as he heard the voice of God speaking through the burning bush. This is in Exodus chapter three. I'm going to read verse, verses one through four. And it reads, now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he, had, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord said, saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. I want to point out a few things about the life of Moses. Uh, years before, Moses already knew that he had a call. He already knew that he would deliver his people, uh, but he, it was a bit premature. Um, and so uh, he left that place that he was called to. And um, he went um, to, I guess, you know, we could say that it was a place of training. Uh, he was in a season of training. And it's, it's it reminds me of sometimes, when we think, okay, this is time now, it's time for this ministry, God is moving. And we heard the voice of God and we heard God begin to say, God may have even spoken things like now is the time or, you know, but, but the timing of the Lord is often so far from our timing. But Moses heard that and, he, and uh, we know the story. If you um, have been a student of the word, whether in church listening to someone else, whether your own study, we know the story. 
that how Moses ran because um, his brothers or had seen what he had done and uh, he just, he ran, but he came to a place. God was still guiding him. God was still leading him. God was still in control. But when the time had come for God to send him forth, God got his attention. And sometimes things that happen in our lives, they are attention getters. Uh, they're not meant to, to, to cause us to be in a place where, okay, I'm not producing fruit. I know I'm called, but nothing is happening. Sometimes it's an attention getter because we've been in training for a season. And so uh, he got Moses' attention. And I want to, uh, to call your attention to what he said. So, so when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. It's important also to note that God was drawing Moses. You know, Moses might've went out to feed the flock, but he didn't know that God was drawing him. God was drawing him to the burning bush. God was drawing him to the place where he would speak. And so uh, one of the things about God is that he works when we don't necessarily know that he's working. So we don't have to be perfect. But if we have ever yielded our hearts to the Lord, God does not forget that. And he's continually working uh, to bring us to the place where, uh, where he can really begin to speak to us. Now, Moses, God spoke to Moses through this burning bush. And this was a turn, this was the beginning of the real birthing of his ministry. So verse six, God, the first thing God did was when, when he got his attention was that he, he revealed who he was to Moses. He says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And now if we read down to verses seven through 10, Exodus chapter three is where we are. And it says, uh, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And then he goes on to say, now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You know, there's so many things in this passage of scripture. You know, one is that God was saying, I have seen the oppression of my people. I have come down to deliver them. <laughs> he was the one that was going to be working with Moses. And, and so he was never expecting Moses to do this thing alone. He was not expecting him to do all the work. He only needed Moses to hear and do what he said to do. But he would be the one who's doing the work. He would be, he, he was the deliverer and he would deliver his people. And we know the story as to how uh, he hardened the heart of Pharaoh and he performed miracles and signs and wonders so that Pharaoh would have to let his people go. And it took a little bit, but the end of the story was Pharaoh had to let the people of uh, the children of Israel go. He had to let them go. And so Moses was, was with them and, and Moses didn't have a lot of confidence at this point in his life. He didn't have a lot of confidence that he could do uh, what was in his heart to do, but he may not have factored in the fact or the point that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would be with him. Glory to God. And so today we have to remember that when we hear the voice of God and respond to his voice, this great God of love who we serve, he is with us. Glory to God. He's not expecting us to build ministry or do what he's called us to do without his help. No, he is the one who is with us. He's calling us forth and all the angels of heaven are, are backing us up, you know, so now, but it's important that we hear the call of God. And uh, I want to go further in this because there were others who heard the call of God, but they heard it through his voice. So John the Baptist, we know the story of John the Baptist and he knew who he was. He knew he was the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. What was it about the voice of John the Baptist? 
the words that he would speak, people would hear because they would hear the voice of God. They would hear the words that he spoke as coming from God. So John was called the voice of God, but he was the voice of one who was crying in the wilderness. And his message was, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. We know about John the Baptist, but there was something about his voice that caused people to repent. <laughs> and that was his message. Repent, for the Lord is at hand. It was not John causing them to repent, but it was the voice of God speaking through him to the people that it was time for them to repent so that their hearts could be prepared for the coming Messiah and they could receive him. And so we know that some repented, but we know that the scribes and the Pharisees were not repentant. And so they didn't really hear the voice of God as he was speaking through Moses. And when Jesus came on the scene, neither were they hearing his voice and following him. And so, but those who hear the voice of God, uh, they, they can also recognize as God is speaking through a man or woman of God, or even if he's speaking through a little child. And that's what we want to do. We want to be sensitive to when God is speaking. We don't, don't want to be so caught up in the vessel that he's using, but knowing that the God of love is on the inside of us, knowing that the Holy Spirit speaks and he can use whoever he wants to get his point across. We know in the Old Testament that he used a donkey and he opened the mouth of the donkey to speak. You know, this is a great God that we serve. And so now uh, we, 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 want, we know that we must hear the voice of God. We know that John the Baptist heard the voice of God. You know, there would be a time later where John's faith in Jesus as a Messiah would be really tempted, tempted or tested. He knew that later. But at this point in his life and ministry, he heard the voice of God when he was getting ready to baptize Jesus saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But you know, the interesting thing about that, as I was reading, uh, when Peter, James and John uh, went on the mount and uh, there was a transfiguration. Now the Lord said the same thing to them, but he added this part. And so I want to read it. He says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Glory to God. So now what God is saying, when I want you to hear my son. If you hear my son, then you're going to hear my voice. So they walk with Jesus and God said to them, hear him. Listen to what he's saying. Glory to God. Pay attention to what the son is saying. He's speaking my words. So hear him. And that was one of the prophetic words. Um, in, in the book of Acts, uh, that, um, <clears throat> that, uh, where, uh, Stephen was being, uh, stoned. And, uh, one of the things that he said is that he reminded them that Moses has spoken of a prophet that God would raise up like him. And he says, him, you will hear. And so, uh, and in this day and time, it talked about Hebrews chapter one, where he said, uh, that God who in times past has spoken to us through his uh through uh the, his, his servants the prophets uh, but today he's speaking to us through his son Jesus glory to God so we want to know when the lord is speaking Jesus said to the scribes and the pharisees you know if you really were of your father Abraham then you would hear me because you would know that i am the one that even uh, uh, he prophesied about, I'm, I'm serving the same God that he served. So you would hear. So, so when we hear, you know, uh, it, it has, it has to do with whose voice we're listening to when we hear others or whether we don't hear them. Now I'm just reminded of a passage in first John where he talked, uh, he was talking to, uh, the, the, the ones who were under his authority as, you know, uh, under his apostolic ministry, we'll, we can put it like that. Because these were John, John was writing to them. And what he was saying was encouraging them about those who were disobedient to them, those who had left. And he said, if they were really of God, they would hear you, but they're not hearing you because they're not from God. 
And that is a distinction that the word of God makes between those who are doing the will of God and those who are not is that they hear the voice of God and they learn to hear and discern the voice of God, even when he's speaking through situations, circumstances, uh, to, uh, through others. It's important that we know that even when we're under leadership, it's important to know that when that leader is speaking, that we're hearing the voice of God. What we want to do is to tune our ear in. We want to say, okay, God, what are you saying through my leader? What are you saying through the word? It never fails that when I go to church and I'm, I'm needing some comp, some assurance, it doesn't matter uh, who's speaking. <laughs> when I acknowledge the Lord and ask him to speak to me uh, what through that vessel, when I go, I hear a word from the Lord. We cannot get caught up in people. I don't care how anointed they are, because if you're not hearing the voice of God as he's speaking to them, you could end up off, off course, even though that leader uh, has nothing to do with you being off course. That leader himself may be on course. And so I want to just point that out. Now, one of the things that, that the mother of Jesus said uh, when, they, when they were at a wedding feast and, and Jesus would turn the water into wine and she said to the servants, Whatever he says, do it. <laughs> and I believe that God is saying the same thing today. Whatever the spirit of God says, do it. Why? Well, Jesus said um, he, he would no longer be here physically in physical form with us for because he was leaving to go back to his home on high. But he said, but I'm sending you the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He will take the things that I say and he will show them to you. He will share them to you. He uh, with you. He would reveal them to you. And so now he said concerning the Holy Spirit that he will not only be with you, but he will live and abide in you forever. Glory to God. And so when we're talking now, hearing the voice of God, we have the Holy Spirit residing on the inside of us. And we can hear what the Lord is saying. So now let's look. We know with Moses, that was the beginning of his call that he heard the voice of God. Now let's look at another example. And it's the example of Saul. And Saul is sharing his testimony. Um, and he says, it's in Acts 22, verses six to nine. He says, now it happened as I journeyed and came near Damascus at about noon, suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. Now, Saul had an, an encounter that changed his life. And one of the reasons is that he was going the wrong direction. And he was fully persuaded that he was right, that he was on course. And so God uh, 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 revealed his son to Saul through a supernatural encounter. And, you know, sometimes uh, we can be so gung-ho about something that something really does have to happen for us to realize you're going the wrong direction. And I need you to turn around and go in the direction that I'm choosing. And so we don't want to be uh, 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 so uh, stubborn and insistent that we're, we're going the right way and not having taken the time to say, okay, God, I want to listen to you. What are you saying? Are you saying, it? are these situations and circumstances, are they revealing something to me that's off course that you want to get my attention and get me back on course with you? Lord, what are you saying? Even through the situations and the circumstances, we must hear God. Now, there are times when we are in situations and circumstances that are hard and they seem like that they're long and drawn out. And as we press into God, that we'll hear him say things like, you are on course, or in due season, you will reap if you faint not, or we'll hear him give that assurance that everything is going to be all right because he's working. But there are also times when there's a disturbance in our spirits and in our hearts, when we know something is off, but we can't seem to pinpoint it. We know that something is off because we know that we should be seeing fruit or bearing fruit that some things should be going, uh, uh, be, be prospering. We should be seeing as we releasing our faith 
We should be seeing if nothing but a sprout for something that's happening. And so inwardly, we're saying, God, something is wrong. I don't know what it is. It's during these times that God really does want to speak. And I believe, and I heard uh, someone say, God loves us enough to summon us, summon us into his presence so he can reveal to us what's really going on. And so sometimes things are really bad, but he doesn't want us to be discouraged but he does want to summon us back into his presence. He does want us to take the time to say, listen, I'm going to fast and pray because the enemy's voice is speaking so loud and I'm trying to silence his voice and the flesh is speaking, you know, where the soul is saying, you know, uh, well, uh, this is, you know, God is not coming through for you. God is not. No, that's a lie of the enemy. And sometimes you have to take that time to fast and pray and to quiet the soul, glory to God, and, and to cut the enemy's hand off of the flesh that he's putting pressure. He can put pressure on the soul. He can put pressure on the body. And it seems like that you're really driven to do something, but you haven't heard from the Lord what you need to do. Those are times where we fast and pray and say, let me hear what God is saying. And even sometimes you may need to get somebody else to pray with you, you know, honestly, because we're helpers of one another to say, listen, can you pray with me? Because I'm really, I've been really pressing and trying to hear God in this situation, but I'm just not hearing anything. Can you pray with me? Because God wants us to hear his voice. Now, this was what he said uh, uh, to, to Saul. And, um, and so as we go a little further, uh, we find that God, and that, that, that encounter really led to the rebirthing of the Apostle Paul's ministry, the real true birthing of his true and authentic ministry, because God got his attention to let him know, you are persecuting the church, but you're really persecuting me. So this is why you're persecuting me. He said, it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. So he was kicking against what the Holy Spirit was really doing, and God needed to God needed to set him on course. So we know the end of that story is he said, Ananias, uh, to come and to lay hands on him that he would see his sight. Sometimes our seeing is just off. Sometimes it's our seeing that's off or our perception. And sometimes it's our hearing that's off. But if we don't see correctly, we won't hear correctly. So when our perception of things is, is totally off, that's sometimes one of the things that God does want to set right. Glory to God. And so um, why is it so important to hear God? You know, so it's here. So the first reason I believe is so that we can be on course with God in knowing and discovering uh, our true authentic ministry, the ministry to which God has called us to. And so we've got to hear his voice. And that when we hear God in that, God has other people on his mind. But Moses, he heard the crying oppression of his oppression of his people for 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 Saul. Um, they were those the Gentiles. You know, God wanted to bring those Gentiles into the true knowledge of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So the gospel needed to be preached to the Gentiles. God always has his people on his heart. So it doesn't matter what he's calling us to. He's got people on his heart, people who are hurting, people who need him, and he needs willing vessels. Now, let's look at another reason why we want to hear the voice of God. I want to go to Matthew chapter 7. Uh, verses 24 to 27, it says, therefore, Jesus is speaking. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, but it, it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was his fall. So another uh, reason why we need to hear the voice of God and to continue to hear it is because even though we start out doing the call of God and we start out doing what God has called us to do, sometimes the winds of adversity can be so severe uh, that if we don't hear God in the midst of that, we will we will allow the enemy uh, to destroy that thing which God is building. We well, cannot do that if we're hearing and doing what God says to do. And this is what Jesus said, I will liken the one who hears and does my sayings. You know, I will liken him to this kind of man, the, the, the one who built his house on a rock. House can be ministry, house can be family, you know, but we're building on a rock. I just want you to notice that both men heard the voice of God and both men or people, um, uh, 
experience storms and winds and adversities. In other words, hearing the voice of God does not mean you won't go through trials, you won't go through adversities, you won't go through persecutions, but no, you will likely do that. He said, all that live God will suffer persecution. He says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of it, out of them all. But whether we stand, glory to God, or whether we quit and give up, it, it, it has to do with us practicing on a regular basis, hearing and doing what God says to do. Many times, you know, I would have given up but in my heart, in my spirit, I didn't believe that was what God wanted me to do. I was pressing into him and it didn't seem like that's what God wanted me to do. You know, so uh, when the winds of adversity flow, it is important that you have practice or if you haven't, that you begin to practice, God, I'm going to hear what you say. I'm going to do what you say because the winds of adversity will blow. They can be strong. The storms, the winds that are raging against us because Satan is a destroyer. That's what he's wanting to do. He's wanting to destroy your ministry. He's wanting to destroy your life. He's wanting to destroy your family. He's wanting to destroy everything that God has built or that God is building through you. And so hearing the voice of God is really important if we're going to stand, glory to God, having done all to stand, having our loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and we are still believing, glory to God, we are still believing in the voice of the Lord that we have heard, glory to God. We're still pressing and saying, God, if I missed you, reveal that to me. And when you sincerely ask God that, if he's not revealing anything to you, likely you are on course. You are just being tried you are being tested. You are facing winds of adversity where the enemy is trying to stop what God is doing. But you know what? If we endure, glory to God, if we stand, and we're not just standing, and we're not just waiting, but we are standing in faith, believing that this great God of hope that we serve, he has begun a good work in us, and he'll finish the work that he started. We are believing that in spite of what we see, God is at work. And we are yielding to him and saying, Lord, I will agree with you. I will believe the things that you say, and I will keep standing. That's why he said, having done up to stand, stand, therefore, having your Lord's girt, Lord's girt about with truth. So we're standing with the word in our heart, in our minds. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We must hear the words that he's speaking this is what we live by, the rhema word, the word revealed to us, glory to God, by the Holy Spirit. And this is what we stand because it is important that we be able to say, like the Apostle Paul, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. The many I am convinced do not fulfill the call of God because of the winds of adversity. Glory to God. But I tell you what, God will enable us to stand and stand until the victory is won. Glory to God. Till the battle is won. Glory to God. And we can rejoice. We can do like in the psalm that says, we will come again rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Glory to God. We will come again rejoicing. Things may look bad right now, and we may be sowing in tears, but we will reap in joy. Prayer is prayer our seeds. So we want to sow prayer seeds during those times where we agree with God. Glory to God. No, we're not begging and pleading. We are agreeing with God. God, you promised that you would never leave me and you would never forsake me. You promised that you would be with me always, even to the ends of the earth. Psalms 32 and 8 says, I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with mine eye. And in the proverb, uh, yes, in the book of Proverbs, he says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your paths. You know, the voice of reason is also a voice, but that's coming from the voice of the enemy. And he uses what we know in our minds as to what ha what's supposed to happen. And that voice of reason, reason sometimes said, you may as well give up. If God was going to move, he would have moved already. No, that's a lie from the pits of hell. We don't give up until we hear what God said. If God says, now it's time for you to shift or to move, then we shift and we move. If God says, stand still, then we stand still. If God says, rejoice, then we rejoice. If God says, rest in me, then we rest in him. But we want to stand with our faith intact. Glory to God, believing 
God because he loves us. So now we're going to be talking this month as the Lord prompt me to come on and do a live broadcast about hearing the voice of God, how important it is. I believe today that uh, I, uh, the Lord wanted me to emphasize how important that, that hearing the voice of God is as we are birthing ministries, as we are birthing new ministries, as he is rebuilding ministries uh, that the enemy tried to destroy is important. And some may, ne may have never really uh, started in their ministry, what God is calling them to. Some may be complacent. You can be in a place of complacency and sometimes things will happen that will shake you up and, and you will know, okay, I got to get up from this place. I cannot stay here because this is not the Lord. This is the enemy trying to abort the call and to abort my purpose and to give me get me to give up on the promises of God, but I will not do it. I will trust and not be afraid. I hope this message has been a blessing to you today. And I want to pray uh, with you just before we um, close out the teaching for today. And if this message is a blessing to you, as always, I say to you, share it with others so that someone else can also receive and be blessed as well. Glory to God. Feel free to leave a comment and let me know that you heard it and um, that you are, that you uh, have been just receiving from the Lord and just really what God is speaking to you through the message. That's important too. That's get That's an encouragement. So Father God, I thank you and I praise for every person listening to the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord, that you have a voice and you are speaking today. You are speaking through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit within our spirits, but you're also speaking through men and women of God who are your vessels, who are speaking your words. Glory to God. Lord, let your people hear your voice today, what the Holy Spirit is saying to them so that they can know and be assured that you love them, that you care for them, and that you are on the case. And Lord, let those who are uh, moving forward in ministry, let them hear your voice concerning their ministries and that they would know that what you're saying, God, and that they would keep following you. Glory to God. The scripture says, wise men follow him. That's what we do. Father, I give you all the praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day.